Hello, and welcome to our Canyons Bite Size PD on reactive AI, the how and why. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. If you are watching this from home, if you want to just take a second to reflect on what you're hoping to learn today or what questions you have about reactive AI, and you can always email those to me and I'll give you my email here in a moment, but just take a second and pause and reflect on those. Wonderful. So uh, this is just a reminder for me, but this is being recorded. You should be watching this hopefully from that recording um, and that's ready to go for you today. While we're working through this professional development, I know you're at home, but I'd like you just to think about what norm you'd like to focus on. Are you going to be committed, be responsible, be respectful, or be safe? Um, with this being a asynchronous option, you're welcome to pause this and take care of any needs that you have. There's also a button on the bottom of this that you can watch this at a faster speed. So if you'd like to speed up or slow down, the slides are also available. So if you'd like to look through those and just watch the sections of the video that are applicable to you, you're also welcome to do that. But take a second, pause this video, or just reflect which professional development norm are you going to select. Wonderful. Um, hopefully you'll keep reflecting on that as we work through today. Um, today's learning intentions are that you can differentiate between reactive AI from other types of AI. Go to access CSD's view of AI, investigate how to teach students, and develop a plan for future investigations. So we're just going to do a brief overview today, um, but I want you to be able to know that as you investigate, I'm going to have you make a plan at the end. And then our success criteria is that you can explain the difference between reactive AI and other types of AI, access that view of AI, and investigate reactive AI to teach students and develop a plan for further investigation. Today we're looking at our MTSS framework. We are looking at instructional content aligned with Utah core standards. So hopefully you understand about reactive AI so you can apply it to teaching your students in your classroom. Um, and as a brief introduction, my name is Emma Moss. I am a digital teaching and learning specialist here in Canyon School District. And that's my email. So at the beginning, we talked about if you had questions about reactive AI that are answered. By the end of this, you're welcome to send me an email and I'd be happy to help answer those and help um, direct you to resources that might help you. So I'm, I love my job and I'm grateful to be here and present with you today and hope that this helps you. So just as an overview, we're gonna do, we've done our norms and intentions. Um, we're gonna talk about what reactive AI is. I'm gonna give you a chance to investigate reactive AI. I'm gonna model that. And then I'm gonna ask you to pause the video. So even though it says 15 minutes here, this video may not represent that full 15 minutes because you'll be going and playing with a tool. Um, and then we'll wrap up and I'll share some resources. So first I wanna start out by talking about the different types of AI. And I want you to think about how are these different from one another? Also giving you a sample sentence sample stem to model best practice here down in the bottom corner. Um, so as you're thinking, um, think about how are they different? Why are they different? So the first type, which is what we're talking about today is reactive AI. So it responds to data, or inputs without really learning from that data. So it's kind of just doing what you put in. So it's not making creative jumps or anything like that. It's just saying, if this is what you put in, this is what I got out of it, okay? Um, we've seen this with adaptive testing. If you have Alexa, if you've if you ever had your students play chess.com, um, that is reactive AI. It's, it has coding built into it to be able to help support it. The other thing we have is predictive AI. So. It analyzes data to set, to learn and predict future events or make decisions. So different things like that of, I'm looking at the data that I have based on that data set. I'm gonna make a decision based off of that is what the AI is doing. And our last one is generative AI. So it creates new content and generates ideas from learned data patterns. So this is our chat GPT, it's generating new things, it's learning, not just predicting, but it's actually like taking that next step into the creative realm. So take a second, pause. How are these different from one another? Wonderful. So just to silently reflect on your own, Spotify next song suggestion is what type of AI? Yeah, I would say that's a predictive AI. What about rise testing? Take a second to pause. Rice testing is very much a reactive AI. What about Google Bard, which is now Gemini? Did some rebranding there. 
If you haven't heard of this tool, this is a generative AI, so it creates new content from ideas. So oftentimes we looked at reactive, um, it starts to step into this realm of machine learning. So I have here that it responds without learning from data, but it has to have some data patterns. And so for us, we kind of equate those two terms because we don't see a lot with the development of technology. We The line between reactive and predictive is really blurred. And so um, we kind of encapsulate this as the first step in AI, which was really machine learning with that reactive piece. And so I want to show you some of that today. So I want to watch this video. Um, this is a video from code.org. They have a lot of videos that are great for students. They talk about how the learning process works. And so I want you to think about what's something that you learned about machine learning while you watch this. Sorry. Get back to where we were, I apologize. So, like I said, um, reactive AI is really the beginning. It's reacting to those decisions of some app programming. And then we're starting to step in with machine learning, um, helping move those decisions into where we have predictive and generative. And so I wanted to show this video, hopefully take a second to reflect, what did you learn about reactive AI with this machine learning? Okay, so hopefully at this point you're able to differentiate. I wanted to just show you where you can find the view of AI. So. Um, the view of AI is Canyon School District's guidebook um, for how to use AI. And so if you go to canyonsdistrict.org slash family connections, it will take you down to this area where as digital citizenship, you can click on artificial intelligence. And in that space, you're able to find a guidebook. And that guidebook has a lot of information. So I want you to take a second. Um, you can either go to that website, um, but it has things that are specifically for you as an educator. So over here, we have the view of AI in Canyons for educators, and it has the section, um, we start with 
It's an acronym. VUE stands for Value of Understanding, Implementing Safely, Educational Learning, and World Preparation. And so in the educational learning section, we have talking about how can you utilize AI. So I want you to take a second and pause this video. What do you notice or wonder after reading? And how could you find the answers? Okay, great. Hopefully you had a chance to pause the video and kind of read through this. Like I said, I know because this is a asynchronous option, the timing may be a little bit differently, um, but I wanted to make sure that you had a chance to process. So make sure you're pausing as you're watching and working through this. Okay, so we've talked about differentiating reactive AI from other types. I've shown you how to access CSD's view. Now I want you to investigate a way to teach our students. So I'm gonna show you a tool and then I'm gonna again ask you to pause the video, take some time to investigate. And then after that, I'll talk about what you can do in the future. So how do we teach our students about this? This is a machine learning tool that you can share with students. Um, and I want, you to sh I want to go ahead and preview it. So I have it linked here in the slides. And this is called AI for Ocean. So have my, um, it's giving you a special explanation. Garbage dumped in the water affects marine life. In this activity, you're going to program or train AI to identify fish or trash. So you're going to teach, start teaching that reactive AI to become more of a predictive AI in this activity. The first part just has you go over that video that I showed you, and it walks you through this process. So in the first part, it's let's meet AI doesn't know if an object is fish or trash, but it can process images and identify patterns. So then you're gonna tell it, is it a fish or not a fish? And what you provide teaches the AI to recognize that pattern. So it's a really hands-on way for your students to start interacting with AI um, in a way that helps them understand how, what it is and how it works, provides that foundational knowledge. So they kind of see like, this is the educational interview. So this is a fish, but also a fish, fish, Love this yellow fish. My kids would think that looks like a tortilla chip, but fish, not fish. I'm gonna give you some facts. Okay, so you're programming or training. So I want you to go ahead and walk through that process. Um, pause this video, and we're gonna say I'm gonna say take about ten minutes to kind of play with this. Perfect. Thanks for pausing. So now that you have that experience, think about like, how can I use this for my students? What principles would I want them to understand? Um, and I think one of the main principles that I would want my students to understand is that AI is not magic. So it's not, it's not this guy with that. It's not, it's not a magic thing that's happening, though we do hear that term a lot in different programs. What it really is, is that programming piece and that learning from data. And so helping them see and kind of taking, I'm gonna say, um, like the, the mystery and the magic out of it and making it a real tangible thing for our students. And so this world that they're entering in is gonna have a lot of AI embedded to it. And I want them to make sure that they have those skills that they need. Okay, so you've differentiated, you've accessed the view, you've investigated a way to teach students. Now we're gonna develop a plan. So I want you to take a second wherever you are and write down what is your plan for exploring AI or how are you going to incorporate into your teacher preparation? So are you gonna teach students about AI using this particular tool? Um, are you gonna explore some ways you could? Are you gonna find an AI tool that matches your content area from um, some of the Canyon's resources? Are you just gonna learn about it yourself? So pause the video and take a second to develop a plan. Wonderful. So just for your information as we wrap up, um, I do have some things for you to explore. Down here I have code.org lessons. They have free made lessons for um, things about AI. There's also ISTE lessons. So that's the International Society for Technology Education. And there are common sense lessons. So there's a lot of resources out there. These are a couple that I feel like are really good um, depending on your content area and talk about AI. Um, I also have a video about the future of AI. So um, Sam Altman is involved with ChatGPT and OpenAI. Um, and so if you want to watch something fascinating and see how they feel about the future, that's a great resource. This one has 30 AI tools for the classroom designed specifically for different areas. Um, make sure that you check the Canyon School District Learn platform to see which ones are approved. The view guidebook is also linked here. And then bringing AI to school, tips for school leaders. 
um, today are from ISTE. And I just want to wrap up and say, technology alone is not enough. For you as an educator, our students need you and, and the things that you bring that are uniquely human to make a positive impact. So even with the evolution of AI, just know that you are still needed and it's important to, that you are there and you bring your passion and creativity and everything that makes you, you in partnership with the technology to empower our students to learn and be better. So thanks for watching. There's some important links here in the slides. We have our PD Bite Size credit page and then there's a feedback form. I'd always love to hear your feedback. Um, unless you identify yourself, I won't know who you are. So if you want to connect with me, you're also welcome to email me. Um, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.